Dude, you gotta die. Welcome back to Nitronics. Today I'm filming a video I didn't think I would film. If you followed me for any amount of time, you know that my preferred hardware ecosystem for my host setup as an FPGA developer is um, Apple. I really like uh, MacBooks, been a big fan. However, when I got one of the new M2 MacBook Airs, I went to set up a emulation virtual machine of an x86 Ubuntu image and quickly found that no matter how much I tweak the uh, QEMU settings, it just doesn't run well enough to actually be a reliable setup. Until I can figure that out or until emulation kind of catches up to where I can emulate an x86 Ubuntu image on the M2 Max or Vivado and all of the rest of the tools finally release a version that work on ARM-based platforms, then I need to pivot. Now don't get me wrong, my Intel-based 16-inch MacBook is still working great, I love it. I've had it for long enough though that I, I want a backup plan. And this is something I've had my eye on for a little while. I've always been intrigued by native Linux install laptops. Uh, or well, I should rephrase that. I've been interested in laptops that come shipped with Linux already installed because that means they have a kernel optimized for Linux. Uh, I do have a Razer Blade 15 inch that I have installed Linux on myself, just gotten a new drive, swapped it out. However, the battery life is atrocious because the Linux kernel is not optimized for that hardware. Uh, so when these Dell XPS 13s came out and Linux was an option, I was intrigued. I've been intrigued for a while and my whole brick wall that I hit with um, emulation of Ubuntu on the, Mac, on the new M2 based Max finally drove me to make a certain purchase. So let's do an unboxing of this cool new toy that I have bought myself for Christmas. <laughs> The other thing that spurred me to do this video, it's not just an unboxing video, because I know those are kind of overdone and can be boring if that's all they are. Every FPGA forum I've come across, whether it's on Reddit or any of the other mass of the FPGA forums, I always see people asking, what's a good way to get started? What do I need? What's a good starter setup for an FPGA developer? So that I also want to take the opportunity to kind of show you a, a basic entry level FPGA developer setup. That's also why I chose the XPS, just the regular Dell XPS 13 and not the XPS Plus, because the price point of the XPS for the hardware you get is honestly really great for beginners. This particular model that I have with 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive, an i7 Intel processor was just over $1,300, which I think is great. Um, and then I've got some FPGA boards that I think are great for beginners at good price points that I'll go over after we get this guy open and looking at him. So let's get started. Oh, there's nothing more fun than opening a new toy, especially a new laptop. Now, this guy came in a couple different col unusual colors. There was a blue version and a purple version. Um, I normally just like plain old black laptops or silver. Uh, my 16-inch Intel MacBook is just the space gray, but the purple looked interesting to me. So that's what I got, and I'm very curious to see what it looks like in person. Oh, interesting. It's like a little lunchbox setup. I'm glad to see there's plenty of padding in here. Is there anything? No. Oh, there's just a little pull tab here. Oh, that's pretty. That's a pretty color. 
I really like this. This is a pretty purple color. It's very light, which is nice because my 16 inch uh, Intel MacBook Pro is pretty beefy. Can I suddenly not open a computer now? <laughs> Why is this so hard? <laughs> this is almost comical. There's not a good, okay. This should not be this hard, wow. I don't even know if I wanna put this in the video that I had this much trouble opening a laptop. Go ahead and turn it on or do we need to, or is she dead? She might be dead. Oh no, she came on. There we go. Let me plug it in and we'll try that again. Am I gonna be the cheapskate that just uses this sleeve as a case that it came with? I might. Um, oh, that's nice. This is unheard of. It actually came with adapters. I've got a nice little audio to USB-C adapter and a USB-A to USB-C adapter. That, okay. I have to admit, that's great. I'll let this guy boot up for the first time. And yes, indeed, we're booting in Ubuntu. Not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried they'd accidentally send me one with Windows and I'm not a fan of Windows, but it's another story. So, while this guy's booting up, I figured I'd talk through some of my choice FPGA development boards for getting started with your FPGA developer setup. I picked a few of my starter FPGAs um, from Xilinx and then also Lattice, just depending on which tool set you want to install and then also the complexity level of your project. The two Xilinx FPGAs I chose are on the lighter side of the 7 series spectrum, which I have another video talking about the different 7 series Xilinx FPGAs, so I'll let you check that out because that's a lot more information that I want to dive into here. Um, I chose those on the lighter end of the spectrum because the more powerhouse Xilinx FPGAs, like the Zinc UltraScale Plus MPSOC or any of the UltraScale Plus line, you kind of need to have some more experience to really take advantage of that hardware. Um, so the two I chose from Xilinx are the RDZ7. Um, at a price point of $199, it is a little bit more expensive on the hobbyist side, but for a base Zinc 7000 FPGA chip, I think this is a great peripheral board. Um, you've got all of your basics like your HDMI, you've got some PMOD, your Arduino header so you can use any of your Arduino shields and practice adapting those, which I think is a great exercise when you're transitioning from a microcontroller like Raspberry Pi and Arduino to an FPGA is use some of your existing um, shields and hats. I think that really kind of helps you or at least for me, it helps me map the difference and really see how I could take advantage of the FPGA fabric. And of course you've got your ethernet, some USB-A. Um, the thing I like about the RD boards, it also comes in the Artix version. So there's an RD A7, which has the Artix chip on it, which is purely just FPGA fabric. Um, the RD Z7 has the zinc on it. So it's got a physical ARM processor still embedded in the uh, FPGA fabric. So if you've got some ARM-based applications or just some more complex math that needs to run that only a CPU can run, that's kind of tough to implement in fabric, you've got that option. A good thing about this one and why I like to use it, especially it travels pretty well because uh, there are a lot of designs you can just power off of the JTAG UART USB port here. Also, need your good old USB micro K or micro USB cable. Um, most FPGA development boards are micro USB, so that's a great thing to have around. The other Xilinx board that I picked up, um, probably one of my favorites is this little, um, it's called the Zincberry Zero. Uh, you'll notice that between these two, you've got your Arduino header on this guy, so you can adapt your Arduino shields and then this FPGA is the same layout as a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's just replacing um, the ARM micro, the ARM processor with a Zinc uh, FPGA chip. So you've got your same your 40 pin head out, or your 40 pin header with the same pin out as the Raspberry Pi Zero. You've got your USB ports, the mini HDMI. I've got a lot of great tutorials of how to create a Linux image for this guy that mimics um, the Wheezy image for Raspberry Pi Zero. I've also got some great just bare metal like how to use the FPGA on this particular board. Um, I'll link all those below. 
Same for this guy, I have plenty of tutorials on this guy, so I'll link those all for you to get started with. And then my lattice option is one of my other favorite FPGAs. It's the Tiny FPGA. This one is great if you're really on a tight budget. This guy's only $38. Um, this guy's $115. Um, I think I forgot to mention that. So the $115 right now. Uh, the RD Z7 is $199, like I mentioned, and then the RD A7, the Arctic's version, is $159 right now. Um, so if you're really just on a tight budget, you really need to just learn the absolute basics, want to put some logic gates together in VHDL or Verilog, I highly recommend this guy. He's really great, open source, all of that. Um, I have some tutorials on how to install Lattice Diamond on Ubuntu. Um, I'll link that below as well. And then I do have some getting started tutorials on this little tiny FPGA, but I absolutely love this guy. I think he's great. I also just like tiny miniaturized things. Who doesn't? As you can see, you've got a pretty good start here for don't need a whole lot of equipment. You don't need a whole lot of like a whole big old lab or anything. As you can see, you've got, you can really get started as an FPGA developer with a basic laptop such as the Dell XPS 13. I recommend Linux all the time. There are the Windows versions. I can't help you with Windows though. Um, and then one of these guys. So I think I've rambled on well enough. Leave any other questions in the comments below so I can make these ramblings a little bit more directed in the future. Um, like I said, I kind of had this idea based upon questions I see in FPGA forums. So I would love ideas on how to optimize my information delivery in the future. At this point, this guy's ready to go. I just need to install like a uh, Lattice Diamond and the Xilinx tools. I don't need to film that. I have plenty of tutorials on how to install all of that. I'll link those below. Um, and then also check out my other video if you're curious about my VM setup on my um, Intel based 16 inch MacBook Pro. I'll link that video below as well. And I'll see you next time I post a video. Bye. And I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> There's only so many times I can do that before it totally devolves. And I'll see you next time. Bye. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Why? <laughs> it's only gonna get worse. <laughs> Okay, bye.